usually watch a YouTube video when I go to bed to fall asleep to. And for some reason, a couple nights ago, it ended up being a video about Halo. And what the creator was doing was using computer modeling to show what would an actual Halo planet really look like if you stood on the surface and looked up at it? What would be the angle it would whatever angle away from you at, what would that actually look like? How narrow would it actually be? What does the, there isn't really a horizon, but there's going to be sort of a haze where you can't see the halo planet, the, the ground come all the way to you, but then you see it go. It, he went into all these details and then he analyzed each halo game to see which one was the most true to what that would look like. I think it was halo three. I don't remember, but he started talking about, I don't remember why, but there's artificial gravity on Halo, the planet, the ring planets, they spin, and that's what holds you to the ground. So then I started thinking about rotating space stations and how we could create artificial gravity. We've seen that before, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century, uh, The Martian, they all have this. But then I ran into a really bad mental hurdle because I said to myself, wait a minute, the gravity is fake. And I, I kind of sort of understand why you feel gravity. So the spin of it creates this outward centripetal force. So there's centripetal force and then there's centrifugal. And I never remember the difference. So I looked up the difference so I could explain it here. Centripetal force is a real thing. It's, from what I can tell, it's an equal and opposite reaction thing because you have inertia. So when you're sitting in that whatever, like this also works at that thing that spins you at the carnival, you have inertia. So as it spins, you resist a change in direction because something that's rotating is constantly changing direction. So the floor is pushing up on your feet or if it's, like you, if you were in, I don't know, like a catapult or something, it pushes on your back as it moves you. It's the same type of type of motion in a way. So that's real. But centrifugal force, that's a fictitious force. It's not real. And the best I can understand it is when you analyze it from your frame of reference, you feel pushed outward. And in this case, outward would be you being pushed toward the floor. But that's not caused by a real force because there is no actual gravity. It's entirely the upward force. But I don't know if you've heard this before, but all motion is relative. You can't tell the difference between the floor pushing up on you because you're in a rotating frame of reference versus you're standing still and a gravitational well is pushing you. And so you your weight causing your feet to feel something on the floor. You can't tell the difference between those two. But anyways, getting back to space stations and, and even Halo, I thought to myself, for Halo, it's different because a Halo world would, it would weigh, or it'd have a, it would have a massive weight, but nothing close to a real planet, nothing close to even a real moon. So the, it, it would have gravity, but it would be incredibly weak. It relies on the artificial gravity. And for a space station, it's entirely, the only thing that pulls you to the floor is the artificial gravity. But then this is where the problem for me came in. Once I jump, because there's no real gravity, there's no real downward force, why do I not just float? Wouldn't I just float in the air forever? Because there's nothing to pull me down. And so if I just jumped or just calmly lifted myself off the, off the floor, what actually would make me come back down? And I couldn't sleep. I, I thought about this for a long time and I couldn't come up with an answer. So I had to cheat. I had to just basically Google and chat GPT the explanation for this. I don't really have a physicist on call for it. But after looking up the answer, it finally makes perfect sense. And so I'm going to help you understand it. I've done my best to understand this. Physics isn't my thing. But I think this is fairly simple. I'm open to the idea of making mistakes. I really hope that I don't. But uh, so feel free to leave any comments of anything you'd like to add here. But here we go.
this is the world's worst uh, artificial gravity space station slash halo ring world diagram. So what's happening is the thing itself has rotation, and I've indicated that with the, the red arrow here. Now, green represents the vector that represents your velocity from when you jump. So let's say you can jump that high, however, that, however high that is. But because this thing is spinning, you have momentum in the horizontal direction. So you all probably know this, but if you're spinning something above your head and you let go of it, it's going to fly perpendicular to, if it was attached to a string, it's going to fly off perpendicular. So if you're swinging a sling like David and Goliath, you don't let go of it when it's in front of you pointing toward your target. That would make it go that way or that way. Instead, you have to let go of it when it's about 90 degrees between, well, when it forms a 90 degree angle between itself, you, and your target. But these are simply vectors. And what you do is you add them up and that tells you where you are going to end up. So if you were to jump this high and if the momentum, I mean, I completely made up the sizes for the arrows, but if you were to jump this high and we assume that the rotational momentum or velocity is much greater than that, then this is going to tell you where you are going to land, kind of, sort of. Now, if you're jumping straight up, you're just going to land from your perspective in the same place that you started because the ground is rotating along with you. To an outside observer, this spot where the blue arrow is pointing to is going to be where you end up. So that's the reason why you end up hitting the floor. And I've drawn this uh, black line here because that would indicate what your actual path would be. You sum up your vectors between your jump and your horizontal or lateral momentum. And connecting those tells you where you end up, how high off the ground you will go. And you can also figure out how long you would spend in the air. Your hang time is how long it takes for the object you're in to rotate from your starting position to an outside observer's perspective of your ending position. Now, I don't know how to do the math on this, but from what I checked, as long as the artificial gravity is mimicking 9.8 meters per second squared, like it is here on Earth, then your hang time is exactly like it is on Earth. At first, that was kind of weird to me because the object it, it's not going to be spinning all that fast. So to me, that made it seem like you could have really high hang time, but mathematically it works out that it's totally indistinguishable from here on earth. If the thing is rotating to give you the same weight that you would feel here on earth. So I can't do animations, but I can make a flip book style thing using keynote on my computer. So here's our little astronaut master chief, whatever you want to call him. And that is his starting position uh, with the orange block underneath. That's how high, or that's the velocity for his jump, rather. not That's not how high he's going to jump. The black line tells us how high the jump will be. Uh, but that's just his velocity. And then the blue arrow is that momentum horizontally. So if we were to just let this play through, that's what the jump ends up looking like. And it's the same if we go forward or backward but that is the actual path you would take. And then we can see, because the whole thing is rotating in unison, you land where you started in this case, and that's what it would look like. Now, what's weird about this is that you're jumping straight up, but because the ground beneath you is moving, you actually do have a parabolic trajectory in a way, but the line is a straight line. Well, remember that motion is relative. So if we were, in this case, to take the ground and flatten it out, what you'd end up with is the thin black line that is a straight line now becomes a parabolic curve. Now there is one thing about Halo that's a little bit weird, and it's that this all only works if you have the same momentum as the ring. So when they fly into the Halo planets on the Pelicans, if you were to just fly to a Halo planet and hover above the ground, 10 meters in the air or something like that, the planet would just be rotating below you. And if you jumped out of the pelican, you wouldn't fall to the ground. 
you would just float there as the planet rotated below you. Now, technically, it does have mass, so you could calculate this. If I had one of those universe sandbox simulators, I could do this, but I don't. You could calculate how long it would take for the mass of the ring world to pull you down. I'm sure it would be a very, very, very long time. However, in order to make this quote-unquote work, all the pelican would have to do, I assume, is as it flies into the ring world, it would then have to match the ground speed effectively of, of the planet. And then with that in mind, it's no different than you being connected to the ground, like when you jump, because you have that, you have that uh, at any instant, you have a particular horizontal momentum. So then once you got out of the pelican, just like in our other example here, but from a higher up vantage point, you would just travel to the ground as you normally would. But what's cool about that is if they didn't match the ground speed, if they went slower than the ground speed, you could have a controlled descent. So you could fall more slowly. So you could start off really high up at a lethal, at a uh, lethal height. Halo 1 didn't have fall damage. And then I think they introduced it in later games and then got rid of it again, but whatever. Uh, but you could actually, for the most part, get rid of fall damage. So that's my lesson on how artificial gravity works that nobody asked for. Hope you liked it. This video and all my videos is on my Patreon ad-free, and you can get a free copy of my first book by being a member too. Plus your name will appear in the end credits. Thank you.